Okay, hello and welcome everyone into today's video. My name is Pranoy and today we are talking about data validation. So when you make an application inside Five, Five gives you a dedicated MySQL database for that application. So I just quickly wanted to cover some of the ways inside Five, how you can validate your data. Okay, so right here, I have an application called as Five Demo. It's a very simple application. Let me run it and show it to you. Okay, so when you open up the application, we get a terms and conditions page, we can click accept and then continue. And now when you open up the application, you are greeted with, greeted with our landing page. And then you have two menu items on the left, which is one for the managers, where they can view data sets and dashboards. They also can send server requests to a particular a customer about a particular property. And then you, uh, managers can also look at each customers who have tried to make a booking request for a particular property. Similarly, you also have a section for the customers, where the uh, customers get this form, where they can select um, their, a particular property, let's say one Alexander Street, then they can write in their name, which is my name is Pinoy, then their city, then they can then they get this date and time picker to select the date and time for when they want to inspect the property and then lastly they can write their email okay so a very simple application so let's quickly exit from this and go back to our development environment okay going back to data validation so the first technique that i wanted to talk about today was uh, using five's built-in constraints to validate your mysql data especially when you're creating a table so when you create a table inside five five actually gives you a lot of built-in constraints through you which you can validate your data so let's quickly look at that okay so now we are inside the development environment of five now let's say that you want to create a table let me give you a more specific example Let's say that we want to create a table which is similar to this one. Where the table is called customers, where we have an ID which is an integer and not null. Then we also have a name, varchar of size 255, again, which cannot be null. Then we have an age, which is an integer. And then the ID also serves as the primary key because it's unique. So let's see how we can build this exact same table inside five. So what you do is you want to click on data and then tables. Once you're inside table, what you want to uh, do is you want to click on the new table wizard. Once I click on the new table wizard, you can start by naming your table. Now, since this application already contains a customer table, so I'll just call it the customer, sorry, the customer two. And now let's go ahead and add our fields. So the first field I had was the ID, but I'm not going to put in, uh, I'm not going to put in the ID and you'll just see why. So I'm gonna start with the name first. So our first field is gonna be name. So since uh, our name field had a constraint of not null, so inside five, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have this required box checked. So it makes this field as required and it should always contain value. And if it doesn't, five will return an error. And name had a size of 255. So let's give it 255. Okay, so that was for name. Our next uh, field was age. So let's add in the next field, call it age. Now select the data type as int for this one. So select an integer. Now, since this wasn't a not null, so we're not gonna uh, check the required box and everything else is set. Okay, after, after you're done with this, click on save and bam, you're done with your table. Now, if you remember, I specifically did not put our ID field inside a table because let's, if you go to our database modeler and if you find our customer two table over here, which is this one, expand it, you'll see that it has a field called as name and age, which is the one we built, but it also has an extra field called as customer two key. Now, this is because whenever you make a table inside five, five will automatically generate the primary key for you. So whenever you want to replicate a table which contains a primary key, remember that five will automatically generate it for you. So be careful about that. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was data and display types. So whenever inside five, you're making a table and you're creating a field, five actually asks for two different types, which is data and display types. Let me quickly show it to you. 
Okay, going back to our development environment, let's just click on our customer table. Once I've clicked on our customer table, click on fields. And after click on fields, you have noticed that you can see all of your fields inside this table. We have a customer key, customer name, booking time, property, and email. And you'll see that all of these fields, they have data types. Our customer key, since it's a primary key, is a GUID. Then we have text, timestamp, another GUID, which is a foreign key for the property table. And then uh, email, which has data type of text. Let's say if you click on one of them, if let's say if you want to click on customer name. Okay. So you see, if you click on customer name, it has two different types, which is data and uh, display type. Okay, so data type basically tells us what kind of data is stored in our MySQL database. So basically, a customer name is stored as a text in our MySQL database or a varchar, which is the same. While the display type tells us how the data is going to be displayed into our end user application. Okay, for example, let's that we want to change the display type of a particular field inside this uh, process. So at first we have a field which lets us select our property and then we get to type in our name, then our city. So then we have a data time picker and then we have a last field it takes in our email. Now let's say that we want to change the display type of this last field, which is the email. Let's see how we can do that. So if we minimize our application, and now if we go back to a process, which is called as the booking request process, now select the email field. Now inside the email field, you'll see that you have something called as display type. And here it's text. So you can change it to anything you want. So for example, if we change it to a memo, so a memo is just uh, like text, but it appears way bigger with a lot of more padding. So you can, we can basically write longer and bigger sentences there. So if we change it to memo now, and we click on save, and we click on save again. Now let's run our application again and see what changes that bring to our uh, app. Now if we go back to a booking request, let's quickly fill in this form like the date and now you can see our email field is way bigger with a lot more padding that's because we have changed the display type and now it looks different in our end user application okay so the next thing that i wanted to talk about was custom display types and regular expressions so yes you can validate data inside files using regular expressions and you can add, make your custom display types as well so we just talked about display types now let's look at these two Okay, so going back to my end user application, currently in my email field, there is no sort of validation. So for example, if I just type in anything, this field just accepts it. I want to change that into it recognizing if I have typed in an email or not. And if I have it, it should return an error. So basically this field should do some sort of validation. So let's see how we can do that. So minimize our application. Let's go back to a development environment. Okay, so in order to make a custom display type, you want to click on setup. And here you have an item called as display types. Okay, so let's add an item. You can call it the email because you're making it for an email field. The starting display type can be a text. And now since I want this field to only accept emails, I'll scroll down to the bottom. And here as I can see that I have a button which says regular expressions. So let's quickly toggle that. And now our mask field can accept regular expressions. So here I'm just gonna copy this uh, simple regular expression, which is mentioned in our blog post. You can also get it from there. And then I'm gonna type in an error message. So this is the error message that it's gonna return when we have typed in an invalid email. So we're just gonna mention, please uh, give a valid email and then we can click on save. So once we are done making a custom display type, what you wanna do is you wanna go back to our processes, select on booking request, and then fields, back to your email. And now let's change it from memo to email that we just built. Let's click on save, save again. Now let's run our application and see how different our email field looks and behaves now. So we get a terms and conditions page. 
Let's click on booking request. Quickly select a property, type in any name and date. And now it looks different from our memo. As you can see, it looks more like how it used to look earlier. And now once I type in just my name and not a valid email, you see it returns an error, which says, please give a valid email. And also the field has turned red because it's not a valid format. But as soon as you type a valid format here, it accepts it. Okay, so that's how you can use custom display type and regular expressions for your data validation. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is functions and on validate events. So of course you can write full code JavaScript and TypeScript functions inside five, but you can also use those functions to validate your data. Let me show you how. Okay, so going back to our development environment. So if you click on logic and then you click on code editor, then five opens a full code editor. Here you can add a new code, which uh, basically you can name in anything you want and then select a language. But for this video, I've already written a very simple function, which I've just called validation. So what this function does is that it takes in the customer name from our process and stores it inside this variable. And just a simple, very simple example function, which if the name is not five, then it will return a message which says that the user is not five. Otherwise, it will return a message that hello five.co. So let's see if such a simple function works or not. So we can save it. Let's go back to our process. Click on booking request and then fields. Now, since it was a validation for a customer name, so let's click on customer name. So inside customer name, after you inside general, click on events. And here you'll see that you have an event which says on validate. So let's quickly attach our function, which is we just made called as validation and click on save. And let's click on save again. Let's run our app and see if validation works or not. We quickly accept terms and conditions. We quickly go to a process and the customer name. So if we type in five, and we exit out, we get a message, hello, five.co. But if we type anything else, let's say if we type a message, let's pranoy. Now we get user is not five. So yes, with such a simple function method, you can use your full code, your custom functions to validate your data into whatever sense that you want. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about was permissions and access control. So these are for when your application is a multi-user application and you want to give certain permissions to certain users and uh, certain per per different permissions to different roles. So let's see how we can do that. So again, going back to our development environment. So first things first, we need to make our application into a multi-user application. So you can do that by clicking on applications five demo over here. And now click on the edit button for your app. And here you'll see that you have this little tab called as multi-user. So just go ahead and toggle that and click on save. And now your application is a multi-user application. So you now click on manage and now run your app again. So now once you make your application into a multi-user app, five actually makes two default roles for you, which is one is the admin and the other is the public. All right now what you wanna do is you wanna set up an password for your admin account. So you can do that by typing in admin and admin in the password and then clicking on sign in. And now five prompts you to update your password. So now you can type in any password of your choice and then click on update password. Now you get your terms and conditions, continue. And now you're inside your application as an admin user. Okay. So let's see how we can make, how we can assign different permissions to different roles. So let's first create a new role and you can do that by clicking on setup and then roles. Here you'll see this app already has um, a particular role, which is management agent and standalone. So let's make a role for our customer. So you can do that by adding an item and you can just call it the customer.
And now you can basically tell that which menu item does this role have access to. So we know that this menu item has access to the customer menu item. And now you can pretty much see everything has empty. And on the bottom, you can give this particular role the default permissions for create, read, update, and delete. So I'm just gonna give it our default permissions to create, read, update, and delete. I'll just give it everything. You can also click on permissions here and assign CRUD permissions for each and every table. So basically this role can have different CRUD permissions for different tables. But I'm gonna just keep things simple for uh, this video. Just go back to general and just give it the default permissions to create, uh, read, and maybe update, but not delete. Okay, so let's click on save. And now let's run our application again. Here now what I want to, I want to log in as an admin first. And now you'll see that admin has a new menu item called as users. So let's click on users. Now you can see there are only two users in our application, which is admin and public. So let's quickly add a new user for our customer role that we just made. So click on add item. You can give it uh, any ID that you want, but be careful, this is the ID that you'll use to log in. So I'll just call it the uh, customer, oh, customer ID. Let's give it a full name. We can call him John Doe. Let's give him a dumb email. I'll call him John at the red com. I can leave the phone number as empty as it's not required. Let's give it a password. And now let's assign the role that we just made, which is the customer role. Let's click on save and you're done now. What you want to do is you want to click on this avatar icon over here and click on log out. And now let's log in as a customer. So we name the customer ID and type in the password. And now we are inside our application and bam, you can only see that the customer um, role only has access to the booking request and nothing else because the customers only need to fill in the uh, booking request and the rest of the menus are for admins and ma managers. Okay, so that was some of the ways how you can validate your data inside Five. Hopefully this video was useful. And if you liked it, make sure to subscribe for our future videos. And till then, um, see everyone and thank you.